for the perfect pit stop. We would. <laughs> Uh, let's get to our guest today, though. Uh, she is the inspirational Lindsay Burrow, the wife of former rugby league star Rob Burrow. Their vows in sickness and in health couldn't have been more poignant when Rob and Lindsay Burrow married in 2006. The childhood sweethearts started a family of their own, and Rob's rugby career was flying. But in December 2019, their world changed forever when Rob was diagnosed with motor neurone disease. Yeah, I mean, good days, bad days, but, um, yeah. Now I remember a nurse being sat in the corner and, you know, the, obviously, how are you? And, you know, I'm sorry to say it's not good news. You look at Rob, if he can kind of do what he does and, and face that with, with a smile on his face, then, you know, we, we can keep going. Through fundraisers and marathons, this determined family made it their mission to raise awareness and millions in Rob's name. Rob was awarded an MBE and, more recently, a Pride of Britain award. She's stronger than any rugby hero I've ever played alongside and I'm so lucky to have her. Despite their challenges, their love is stronger than ever. Without her, I wouldn't be here today. And we're delighted that Lindsay is with us today. Welcome <laughs> to Lee's <Lisa. laughs> This all started four years ago, and we will go back to that moment, but how is Rob at the moment? He's How's really he doing? good. He's in good spirits, always got a smile on his face, and, yeah, really good. And will he be watching you today? Hopefully, yes, yeah, yeah I think he will be. Hello, Rob. <laughs> Hi, Rob. Hi, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> um, you saw there, I mean, childhood sweethearts, you said it was almost like love at first sight, and 14 or something. Um, and there you are in this happy marriage, you've got a family of your own, and then four years ago, you get this terrible diagnosis. What were the symptoms at that point that made you or Rob or his friends think that something might not be quite right? Yeah, so Rob was having difficulty with, with his speech, he was slow in words, um, and people were questioning whether he was doing something that he shouldn't be doing. Um, and obviously oh, playing... Like kind drinking. Of, yeah, drinking, yeah. yeah. And Rob wasn't a drinker, you know, quite boring, um, like myself in many ways, and I think... Um, Having obviously played rugby, having a lot of head injuries, it was investigated quite quickly. Um, and within three weeks, Rob had the diagnosis, the devastating diagnosis that he had MND. And were you with him at that time? I point? was with him at the time, yeah. We'd had, I think MND is such a difficult condition to diagnose. He'd had a battery t of tests leading up to that and everything had come back positive and um, uh, negative. So we were quite oh, hopeful going God into had. that, yeah, that it wasn't MND. And, and I'd asked the question, could this be motor neuron disease? And the consultant said, you know, it's quite a rare condition, um, probably not. So we were quite optimistic going into that appointment, thinking, you know, this will be At curable, treated, well, absolutely. And so to be given the diagnosis and given a year to two years live, to live in back in 2000. And did they tell you that straight away? Did you? Did he yeah, ask? Did Rob I ask, ask, I asked the question. Um, so yeah, it was, it was almost like being handed a death sentence, I suppose. It was kind of get your affairs in order and, you know. So when, I mean, it's just unimaginable and awful. So when you came out of that room together. What, what, were you, what did you decide when you were going home? You've got young children, your families. Do you keep it to yourselves for a while? Did you want to tell people? Yeah, such a huge array of emotions. You know, you're constantly, you've just been told this devastating news and the first thing in my thought was, you know, how are we going to tell the children? We've got three young children under the age of 10. How, how are we going to break it to them? Um, and the first thing that Rob said to me was, thank goodness it's me and not you and the children. And that was sort of Rob's, Rob's oh, taking it. That was his perspective. He was, you know, he was more bothered about myself and the children and telling his family. And, and that was his biggest worry. Um, you know, attitude is, 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 you know, inspir inspirational. Mm. I, you know, I, I just... Was he always that positive a person? When, when he was, you know, we talked about this in, in makeup before, mm -hmm. when he was poorly in much lesser ways in normal things. Has he always been this incredibly upbeat, positive guy? He has. He has such a positive mental outlook, and I think a lot of that comes from the rugby. I think the mental toughness, and I think Rob's had adversity in his career. You know, he was told he was too small to play rugby league, he'd never make it. So I think that mental toughness in his rugby career and throughout his life has, you know, has, has helped him in his battle with MND. So when you got home, did you decide to tell the children? We didn't know. I actually took the children swimming that day. They got a swimming yeah. lesson and I would yeah. just keep things as normal. And it was yeah. so difficult because in the back of your mind, you're thinking, how are we going to tell the children? What are we going to tell the children? Because we didn't have a lot of the answers. You yeah. know, we were just starting out on this journey. And so it was probably a good week or so. But I think not telling the children was the hardest part because it felt like once we told the children, that a weight had been lifted off our shoulders because the children knew, and, and I think they pick up on things as well. They, they, they sense that there's something wrong. 
Yeah. Um, I mean, it's so four, it four years you... on now since you have told them. Um, I mean, your youngest is still only four. What about the older two? Do they ask questions? Do they want to know more? Are they worried, scared? They do. I think seeing the physical deterioration in Rob, um, obviously they, they can see the deterioration, but they, you know, they're such a help. They're, they're so like Rob, they're so resilient and, and courageous and, and they just get on with life and they love life and, you know, they wake up every morning with big, beautiful smiles on their faces and, and they help Rob as much as me. You know, they'll go and get him a drink or, you know, get him what he needs. So it's, you know, it's a family effort and we're really lucky to have three beautiful children. Because you don't have any professional help either as well. You you look after him as a family, don't you? Yes, I look after Rob with, with the help of, you know, my family help with the children, Rob's family help with, with Rob's cares as well. So it's, you know, it's a full team effort. And, you know, I'm just so grateful to be able to do that because there's many carers that, that can't go to work, that have to give up the job. And, you know, so I feel very fortunate to have that family support. I mean, talking of, of team members, um, Rob's teammate and friend, Kevin Sinfield, mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think any of us will forget <laughs> that amazing image of him carrying Rob across the finishing line at, mm -hmm. at the marathon. Uh, did you know he was going to do that? Was that a spur of the moment thing? I mean, it was amazing. <laughs> that is such a show of friendship, isn't it? Absolutely. So I didn't know Kev was going to do that, actually. I think he'd, he'd messaged Rob about it before, and I think the marathon had taken quite a lot out of Rob. They had to have six or seven stops along the way. Um, so Rob was quite tired. So the initial plan, I think, was to walk with Rob over the finish line. But as Rob says, it, it, Kevin picked him up so he didn't finish in front of him, because obviously if he'd have pushed Kev over, he would have finished yeah. before him. So <laughs> I think that was kind of Rob's matter. Um, um, I know you, you're not here necessarily to talk about this, but I will just mention, as we're talking about Kevin um, and Rob, Kevin and Rob have written this book together for children called With You Every Step. And you say this is out on Thursday, on Thursday but yes. we're saying they're aiming this predominantly at boys to show that friendship and reaching out. I mean, there's one here. It's just a beautiful <laughs> book. True friends are, even, are always there, even when times are tough. I mean, that says it all about yeah. the two of them, doesn't Ruth it? Ruth and I got emotional because it's sort of <laughs> in the style of our old Janet yeah. and John book. It's yeah. a real yeah. sort of yes. like old-fashioned yeah. kiddie, kiddies book. And, of course, together with Kevin, just tell us how much you've raised for MND over the years. So there's been over 13 million now that's been raised. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> I was talking earlier before you came in, Lindsay, reading your story on Rob's stories, that unfortunately for you, you've ended up becoming a spokesperson for motor neurone disease from maybe not even knowing much about it. I mean, I know you're, you're a physiotherapist mm -hmm. for the NHS. Um, how does that sit with you? Because I know so many people we interview on here, and I've interviewed over the years, that sadly something like this happens mm. in their lives and unintentionally somehow they become this spokesperson and they do incredible things. Um, like you have, raising money. Um, does it sit well with you? Or you know, is it this just is something completely out of my with? comfort zone, to be honest, because, you know, I'm just a working-class mum um, and I think, you know, just really stood by Rob and he wanted to open his doors and, and to show the world, you know, the reality of living with MND and I just got dragged, dragged along with the, the side of him and, you know, I'll do all... just want to do my little bit to, to share my story. But you let cameras... Another family on yeah, campus. but you did... Um... You did let cameras into your home, didn't you? Why was that important for Rob to show people the th everyday reality of living with MND? I think he just wanted to show how MND not only affects a person, but the whole family living mm -hmm. with MND. And he wanted to show the brutality of it and how quickly it takes hold of people um, to bring that into people's living rooms and, and to raise that awareness, which I think is, you know, is, is crucial. Yeah. So is the money being raised uh, for research and to try and yeah, uh, so find we, the cure? Absolutely. So we wanted the money to go towards research, to yes. give people hope to better trials and, and things, because um, it often in the, in the past has been underfunded, but also to help support families, so to help support families with children, families that maybe need adaptations in terms of stair lifts or yeah. things doing to the house to, to help that as well. And, and just, you know, family days out where they can go make memories and, and have happy mm. times as a family. Well, as we said, I mean, you're an inspirational couple. <laughs> I mean, you really are, the two of you, how you're dealing with this and how you've gone public with it, which will be helping so many people. Yeah. Also to Kevin, your friend Kevin, who's mm. been amazing as well with the fundraising and his friendship. We wish you all well, you and the family, and... Mm -hmm. um, and give our love to Rob as well when you get Thank home, you. won't you? Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.